Chapter 13 Sorry, sorry for what. The question was still ringing in my mind the next morning. For once in my life, I slept late. I found Oren and Alisa in our sweet kitchen talking softly. Too softly for me to hear. Avery, Oren noticed me first. I wonder if you have told Alisa about Grayson. There's some security protocols I'd like to go over with you. Like not opening doors to Grayson Hawthorne's. You're a target now, Alisa told me crisply. Given that she'd been so insistent that the Hawthorne's weren't a threat, I had to ask a target for what? Paparazzi, of course. The firm, the firm is keeping a lid on the story for the time being, but that won't last and there are other concerns. Kidnapping? Orin didn't put any particular emphasis on what the word. Stalking? People will make threats, they always do. You're young and you're female, that will make it worse. With your sister's permission, I'll arrange a detail for her as well, as soon as she gets back. Kidnapping, stalking, threats. I couldn't even wrap my mind around the words. Where is Libby, I asked, and she made a reference to her coming back. On a plane, she, Alyssa answered. Specifically, your plane. I have a plane? I was never going to get used to this. You have several, Alyssa told me, and a helicopter, I believe. But that either here nor there. Your sister is in a room to retrieve your things as well as her own. Given the deadline for your move to into Hawthorne's house in the stakes, we thought it would be best that you remain here. Ideally, we have you move in no later than tonight. The second this news gets out, Oren said seriously, you'll be on the cover of every newspaper. You'll be the leading story on every newscast, the number one trending topic to all social media. To some people, you'll be Cinderella. To others, Mary Antoinette. Some people will want me, want to be me. Some people would hate me to the depths of their souls. For the first time, I noticed a gun. Hollister to Oren's side. It's best you sit tight, Oren said eagerly. Your sister should be back tonight. For the rest of the morning, Alisa and I play what I mentally term the uprooting Avery's life in an instant game. I quit my job. Alisa took care of withdrawing me from school. What about my car, I asked. Owen will be driving you for the foreseeable future, but we can't have your vehicle shift if you would like, Alisa offered. Or, we, or you can pick out a new car for personal use. With all the emphasis she put on that, you would have thought she would be talking about buying gum at the supermarket. Do you prefer sedans or UCVs? She queried, holding her phone. In the way that she suggested she was fun, fully capable of ordering a car with a merely lick of a button. Any color preference? You're going to have to excuse me for a second, I told her. I dug back into my bedroom. The bed was piled ridiculously high with pillows. I climbed up on the bed, let myself fall back on the mountain of pillows, and pulled out my phone. Texting, calling, and DMing Max all led to the same result. Nothing. She had definitely had her phone confiscated and possibly her laptop, which meant that she couldn't advise me on the appropriate response when one lawyer started talking about ordering a car like it was foxing pizza. This is unreal. Less than 24 hours earlier, I've been sleeping in a parking lot. The closest i come to... Slurping was the occasional breakfast sandwich. Breakfast sandwich, I thought. Harry, I sat up in bed. Alisa, I called. If I didn't want a new car, if I wanted to spend the money on something else, could I? Bank rolling a place for Harry to stay and getting him to accept it wouldn't be easy. But Alisa told me to consider it handle that the, the world I would live in now, all I have to do was speak and it was handled. This wouldn't last. It couldn't. Sooner or later, someone would figure out this was some kind of screw up. So I might as well enjoy it while it lasts. That was the number one thought on my mind when we went to pick up Libby. As my sister stepped out of my private jet, I wondered if Alyssa could get her into the Sherbonne or buy her a little cupcake shop or 
Libby. Every time my head came screeching to a halt the moment I saw her face. Her right eye was bruised and swollen, nearly shut. Libby swallowed but didn't avert her eyes. If you say I told you so, I will make butterscotch cupcakes and guilt you into eating them every day. Is there a problem I should know about? Alisa asked Libby, her voice deep, sepally calm as she eyed the bruise. Avery hates butterscotch, Libby said, like that was the problem. Alisa, I gritted out. Does your law firm have a hitman on retainer? No. Alisa kept her tone strictly professional, but I'm very res- resourceful. I could make some inquiries. I I literally can't tell if you're joking, Libby said, and then she turned to me. I don't want to talk about it, and I'm fine, but I'm fine. I managed to keep my mouth shut, and all of us managed to make it back to the hotel. The plan was to finish up a few final arrangements and leave immediately for the Hawthorne house. Things did not go exactly according to the plan. We have a problem. Orin didn't sound overly bothered, but Alisa merely put down her phone. Orin nodded to a sweet balcony. Alisa stepped outside, looked down, and swore. I pushed past Orin and went down on the balcony to see what was going on. Down below, outside the hotel entrance, hotel security guards were struggling what appears to be a mob. It wasn't until a flash went off that I realized that what the mob was paparazzis and just like that every camera was pointed up at the background at me chapter 14 I thought you said your fro- your firm has this lockdown Orin give Alyssa a look she squalled back squally scowled back at him made three phone calls in a quick succession two of them in Spanish and then turned back to my head of security. The leak didn't come from us. Her eyes darted towards Libby. It came from her boyfriend. Libby's, boy- Libby's answer was barely more than a whisper. My ex. I'm sorry, Libby had apologized at least a thousand times. She told Drake everything about the will, the conditions on my inheritance, where we were staying and everything. I knew her well enough to know why. He would have been angry that she has taken off, that she would have tried to pet pacify him and at that moment she told him about the money he would have demanded to tag along he would have started making plans to spend the Hawthorne money and Libby God bless her would have told him it wasn't theirs to spend that it wasn't his he hit her she left him he went to the press and now they were here a horde descended on us as Orin let me out a side door there she is a voice yelled Avery Avery over here, Avery, how does it feel to be the richest teenager in America? How does it feel to be the world's youngest billionaire? How did you know Topaz Hawthorne? Is it true that you're Topaz Hawthorne, legitimate daughter? I was shuffled into a USV. The door closed, doling the war of the reporter's questions. Exactly halfway through our drive, I got a text, not from Max, from an unknown number. I opened it and saw a screenshot of the news headlines. Avery Grams, who is the Hawthorne Harris? I a short message combining the picture. Hey, mystery girl, you're officially famous. There were more paparazzis outside the gates of the Hawthorne house, but once we pulled past them, the rest of the world faded away. There was no welcome party, no Jameson, no Grayson, no Hawthorns of any kind. I reached for the massive front door lock. Alisa disappeared around the back of the house. When she finally reappeared, there was a pain expression on her face. She handed me a large envelope. Legally, she said, the Hawthorne's family is required to provide you with keys. Practically speaking, she narrowed her eyes. The Hawthorne's house, the Hawthorne's family is in pain in the ass. The legal term, Orin asked dryly. I ripped open the envelope and found the Hawthorne's family had in deep me with keys, somewhere in the neighborhood of the hundreds of them. Any idea which of, which of these goes to the front door, I asked. They weren't normal keys. They were oversized and ornately made. They all looked like 
antiques and each key was a district. Different designs, different metals, different lengths and sizes. You'll figure it out, someone said. My gaze jerked upward and I found myself staring at the intercom. Cut the games, Jameson, Alyssa ordered. This ain't nearly as cute as you all think it is. No reply. Jameson, Alyssa tried again. Silence and then, I have faith in you, MG. The intercom cut off and Alyssa blew out a long, frustrated breath. God save me from Hawthorne's. MG, Libyas, Bill Ryder. Mystery girl, I clarify. From what I gathered, that Jameson Hawthorne's idea of a nickname. I turned my direct my attention to the ring of the keys in my hand. The obvious solution was to try them all. Assuming that one of these keys opened the front door, I get lucky eventually, but luck didn't feel like enough. I was already the luckiest girl in the world. Some part of me wanted to deserve it. I flipped through the keys, inspecting the designs on the handles. An apple, a snake, a pattern of swirls, reminiscent of water. There were keys for each letter of the alphabet, and a fancy old-fashioned script. There were keys with numbers and keys with shapes, one with the mermaid and four different keys featuring eyes. Well, Alisa said abruptly, do you want me to make a phone call? No. I turned my direct my attention from the keys to the door. The design was simple, geometric, not a match for anything on any of the keys I look at it so far. That would be too easy, I thought. Too simple. A second later, a parallel thought followed. Not simple enough. I learned this much as playing chess. The more complicated a person's strategy seems, so it's like an opponent was looking for simple answers. If you could keep someone looking at your knight, you could take them with a the pawn. Look past the details, past the complications. I shifted my focus from the handles of the keys to the part that actually went into a lock. Although the keys differ in sizes overall, the lock end was sized similar from key to key. Not just size. Similarly, I realized looking at the two of the keys side by side. The pattern, the mechanism that actually turned the lock, was identical between the two. I moved on to a third key, the same. I began working on my way through the ring, comparing each key to the next. One by one, same, same, same. There weren't any other keys on this ring. The faster I flipped through them, the sure I was. There were two thousand copies of the wrong key, dressed up to look different from each other, and then... This one, I finally hit the key with a different pattern from the others. The intercom crackled, but if Jason was still on the other side, he didn't say a word. I moved to put the key in the lock, and adrenaline jolted through my veins when it turned. Eureka! How did you know which key to use? Libby asked me. The answer came from the intercom. Sometimes, Jameson Hawthorne said, soundly, strangely. Contemplative. Things that appear very different on the surface are actually exactly the same at their core.